Hey Glam Fam, Linwood here and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a rope twist to the scalp like this. A lot of people refer to it as flat twisting, but this is going to be slightly different. Flat twisting is more so for your coily or kinky textures because it lays more flat to the head and the curl pattern itself holds it together. For a rope twist, you've got to go through a little bit more of a different action in order to get it to look just like that rope. So we're going to go through the basics of it and then how to do it to the scalp. And then from there, we will move forward with our tutorial. If that interests you, stay tuned. If you already know how to do a standard twist like this, I'll put a timestamp in the video to where you can jump straight to the rope twist to the scalp. Okay, so we're going to first begin by taking this section of hair now, uh, as I stated before, if you already know how to do a rope twist, then you can go ahead and skip forward. I'll put a timestamp in the video to the area that you'll need. But we're going to begin by evenly separating the strand into two. And then from there, I'm going to use the face as a reference here just to make it easier, but you can do it in the opposite direction as well. But I'm going to twist this strand towards the face and then pass it over and away from the face. Just like so. And from here, we're twisting towards the face, taking it back and away from the face. So what you can also do is you can also take and twist both strands at the same time towards the face and then cross over. So whatever is easiest for you there is totally fine. But this is literally the steps that you're going through there. So let me lower you down just a bit because it'll be a little different down at the bottoms. So we're going to just continue that process, twisting towards the face and then away, towards and then away, just like that. And get y'all down to my thankfully freshly vacuumed carpet, <laughs> twisting towards and then away, just like this. Now, when you get down to the bottom, it becomes a little bit more difficult to get it to stay in place and hold together. So usually from there, what I like to do is I like to begin to roll it between my fingers like so. And that way I can still keep that same shape in there. Now, if you have twisted this correctly, if you have twisted this correctly, then basically what you'll see let me see if I can zoom in a little closer there. So if you've twisted it correctly to do that, then you'll notice that that hair will not want to come loose when you finish with it. So I can let it go and it doesn't come unraveled. So you can see here how it doesn't want to come unraveled, even though the, the thickness went dr down drastically on those ends the whole twist of the hole still holds up really well without any degree of rubber band or anything like that on the hair. So if you let go and it releases all the way up, usually that means that you need a little bit more work on your twisting, but it should hold pretty well without a rubber band. Now, of course, if you plan on wearing it anywhere, secure it at the end with a rubber band and you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead now that we've got this down and we'll hop over to the other side. Okay, so on the large panel of the hair here, what we're going to do is begin with a triangle section. And then from there, we're going to take that and split it into two pieces, just like so. Okay. From there, we're going to do the same thing of twisting this hair towards the face, just like we did earlier, and then pulling it up and away from the face. The only difference is now we're going to slide across the bottom and we're going to add to the bottom strand, just like that. Then from there, we just twist it towards the face and then slide it back and away from the face. Sliding across, adding to that bottom strand. I'm gonna smooth it out really nicely. And then from there, we just wanna twist again and pull it back in a way. Now, the reason why I twist it is because it gives it much more of a rope shape here instead of just giving it a loose twist. This is gonna help things look a lot more tight and snug um, and just makes it have a much more professional look to it. So that's something for you to keep in mind there when you're doing this. Now, I find it's easier if you just go ahead and scoop across and add it to the underneath strand um, but you can go ahead and add to the top and the bottom at the same time if you feel that that would be a bit better for you. 
Let me scoot her forward just a bit. Adding here, scoop it out, add in, and we're just smoothing with those fingertips, twisting towards the face, and then pulling up and away from the face. And you can kind of see how that ends up turning out. So I'm just sliding right on across, adding to my bottom strand, twisting towards the face. And you don't have to get crazy twisting towards the face. You don't have to twist it all tight and stuff, just a little bit, and then pull back and away from the face. Just like that. Now, the thing I like about this, of course, is that when you are braiding, you're managing a lot more pieces. Once you get your rhythm with this and you're just managing those two pieces, this is honestly a lot easier for a lot of people than doing something like a French braid or a Dutch braid because of the fact that you're holding less hair. Now, when you get back here, that being said, it does tend to get a little thicker in here, so you may find that it helps you out to slow your pace down some just to make sure you can still keep control over everything that's in your hands, but otherwise you should be good to go. So I'm just twisting, pulling it down. When you get behind the ear on a live client, you wanna always tilt your head forward like so. It stretches out that skin in the neck so that way we're not causing any type of pulling and things and they look down later. So it still holds snug, but it doesn't end up um, pulling that hair out at the base of the neck when they look down later because this skin in here on a live person is really stretchy. That way we're not causing any issues with traction alopecia, otherwise known as baldness due to pulling. You don't end up with those bumps in the nape. And you can see it's getting a little messy in there. So I'm just gonna stop, run my fingers through, and then go ahead and continue. So we just add into the bottom, twist, and to the bottom, twist. And we're just gonna add all that in on that one. Just like so. So once I've got that from there, I can just go ahead and go straight into my rope twist, just like we started with. And then we are good to go. We're getting a little thinner. So here I'm going to go ahead and start rolling between my fingers. Just makes it a little easier to manage. If I can get this camera to focus, let's see if I can zoom in on just my hand. Focus, there we go. Maybe not, I'm telling you. It's, there we go. Okay, and we're just gonna go ahead and continue that process here. And there you have it. So this is my finalized look, as you can see here, and I absolutely love this look on most people's hair, honestly. Now I will say it is a bit easier if the hair has curl pattern or a coil pattern to it because that curl pattern holds it together. The technique that I'm showing here works best on straight or wavy hair. Um, for curly and coily hair, you don't have to do as much twisting. It'll hold together on its own. So I hope this video has been beneficial for you. If it has, let me know in the comment section down below. Please feel free to check out some of my other videos and thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to, I also have a free hair care guide that you can download. I'll put the link in the description box down below and that way you can learn more about how to care for your hair as well as what it takes to care for this hair from a cosmetologist perspective. If that interests you, check it out. Until next time, you guys, take care, God bless, and stay glam. And you know I love you, boo. Bye.